Hello there, my stick crafty friends. Whether you are a stamper or another type of crafter, I'm glad that you are here today. It is Candy here from sweetstamper.com. Welcome, welcome to my weekly Tuesday at 2 Facebook Live from sweetstamper.com. This is our crafty, creative, fun place for inspiration and instruction. And I'm going to have to cough. So let me um, grab something here so I don't cough right into the camera. <coughs> I tell you, I don't know if there's something up in my studio here. Every time I get on live with you guys, I usually sneeze. It's my once a day, but I was actually sneezing right before I came on. And I had just been up in my studio for about an hour. So I'm thinking, maybe there's something up here that's making me sneeze and cough a little bit. So, hey, Kathy, I'm glad you're here. Welcome. We are in the dog days of summer here in San Antonio. Hey, Gail and Velma's here. We've got a good group already. And I'm so proud of myself. I'm actually on time. I would have been totally on time, like to the minute. And then um, Facebook was kind of monkeying around as Facebook does, you know. So you're trying to go live and it's hanging. Hey, Susie, I'm glad you're here too. So I've got some fun things for you today. You know, I've tried to um, differentiate between my Tuesday and my Thursday um, stamping presentations here because I need them to be different in my own brain. Uh, because that gives me direction, and uh, when I have direction, I have at least better focus. And, uh, oh, thank you. I'm glad you like my top. Uh, you know what, Kathy? It could be paper dust. Our housekeeper was here yesterday, and she, you know, she does all the down. My studio is the only upstairs space in our home, and but she came up here, and she vacuumed, and she mopped and everything for me. Um, and last week, um, one of my helpers was wiping down I have a big uh, countertop where we do all the die cutting and you know you do you get a lot of paper dust um, even though it's not dirty there's all these little tiny paper shreds so yeah it could be that that's what's um, that's what's hanging uh, hanging me up in here uh, woof and hello to you Terry Lynn I'm not sure what the woof is but um, my little Roscoe would say hello to you but he doesn't usually come upstairs. And at this point, hey, Crystal, I'm that glad you're here. Um, Roscoe is a Welsh Corgi, and he's 12. And the vet said he probably really shouldn't be coming up the stairs at this point. He's got a little bit of an injury in, a hip, in one of his hips. And um, when he was younger, he used to jump incredibly. I mean, we've had, he's our second Corgi. All of our kids have had Corgis. And uh, Roscoe is unusual. He's like a climber. He would the grandkids would be climbing trees. He'd climb up the tree with them. I mean, it was uncanny. And he would always be jumping up into high, pretty high spaces and places. So I'm not sure if jumping down at some point he injured himself, but he has a little bit of um, not only arthritis in that hip, but it's like he, um, it's like a little injury there that grew in kind of funny. So, um, Thank you so much, Crystal. This must be a good top for me. I'm, this is my second compliment. So, hey, Jackie, I'm glad you're here. Oh, dog days of summer. Now I get you, Terry Lynn. Woof for that. So I must tell you um, about my top. I've been doing some shopping online, as I guess we all do these days. And I went on to Steinmart to get something. And I thought, oh, I'll just look what the sale is. Well, I had this top on sale for $4.97, and I thought, why not? And so when I got it, I thought, well, I don't know. It's it's okay. It's not maybe my favorite, but it's probably usable for summer. And then I went, because when you purchase online, you could return at the store. And um, Steinmark, those of you here in Texas, we have Steinmark. And I know that they're in some states, but not every state. It's not a national company. I think it's kind of a regional chain of um, it's a clothing, mainly clothing and some how, um, like home decor furnishings and stuff at a discount. So kind of like Marshall's or TJ Maxx or something. But uh, you could return in the store and not have to pay the shipping to return some things. So I went in to return some things and lo and behold, they're going out of business, which is just really sad. Um, I think, that, you know, there's just a lot of places right now, especially retail and restaurants and um, yeah challenging times but on to a happier subject so um what we are going to do is we are still using the computer for i've been trying uh, trying to go um 
broadcast from my phone, which is what I had been doing. And it's just, Facebook is doing something a little bit strange right now. So um, I tried again right before I came on, still not working. So we're going with the computer and you'll have to kind of bear with me a little bit. But on the plus side, you get actually a broader um, um, lens, as it were, broader space that you can see that I'm broadcasting from. So you, like you can see the big boss machine a little bit easier. So, um, and Terry Lady, you have Steinmart in St. Louis. Okay. And yeah, you're right, uh, Kathy. This is like the timeless tropical stamp set. So I'm just in keeping with stamping up. Okay. I am going to bring you down a little bit. We're going to do some customizing stamping images and in particular looking at, um, customizing hair and skin tones on people stamps. Um, I, it was interesting. We, there was a conversation I was part of recently where people were talking about that they don't typically purchase stamps like this because they're like, well, those people don't look like me. Well, they don't really look like me either. But I understand, you know, if you're wanting to have something that is a little bit more in keeping with your friends and family than a generic stamp set, how can you customize that a little bit more? Susan, hey, I'm glad you're here. Susan was actually part of the class I did with this stamp set at my retreat. And what was interesting was the ability of people to create these images and then color them in such a way that it typified their own experience or the experience of their family. And um, so I think that uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm going to show you some things about using different shades to bring in different shades of color for our skin tones and as well as our um, hair colors, and then also how you can actually alter them a little bit to create slightly different, even the image itself. So let me um, bring camera down just a wee bit and see. Oh yeah, we're doing pretty good. I know you're seeing a little bit of my, um, the bar on my computer and that's just kind of the way it is right now. So again, we have several stamp sets that have this lovely, um, these lovely people images and um, you can actually do a lot with them. And I must say, I was not initially going to get this stamp set. And then I got to thinking, you know what? I think we could do some fun things with that. So that is where I am and um, Okay, let me show you a few things. Um, this was one of the cards that I made um, when I was designing for a class. It didn't make the cut. Uh, but you can see here where I've given the little girl a blonde uh, hair color and I've given the lady a brown hair color. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do with regard to that. And I just used uh, just kind of a pale um, nude skin tone on these you know, this could be an aunt and a niece. It could be big sister, little sister, mom and daughter, grandma and granddaughter, all kinds of, of people that this could represent. Um, this is another one that did not make the cut. Um, I was just kind of messing around with um, one of the things is where you can take this little um, kind of a mountain background or hill and you can kind of slice that in between your images to give the effect of a hill in the background. But here you can see where my children, they have, you know, super yellow blonde hair. Now, let's move on to this lady was part, this was a sample that I had for my class. And I gave this lady much, much darker hair with a little bit of reddish tint to it. Um, these are the children who are going um, seashell hunting. And I gave them little kind of a light brunette hair color. And it was so sweet when we were at the retreat. Um, one of our ladies who had come actually all the way from California for retreat, um, she said, this is so much like me and my sister when we were little. And so she gave them super white blonde hair and was going to send this card to her sister. So, um, you know, there are just fun things that you can do. Here again, the, uh, the, the mother, daughter, or, you know, big sister, little sister, they have kind of light brown hair. Um, this is, doesn't have any people at all because you can create scenes where you don't use any people. 
and then um, this one here. So these were just the cards that I had from the class, and I'm kind of using that to key off of because we're going to look at what we can do to create more of uh, a, a darker skin tones in particular, um, more of ethnic hair or much darker hair. Um, I know that my grandchildren on my, uh, from my daughter, her husband is Persian, so they all have very, very dark hair and much more olivey skin than my husband and I. And um, so I can see where making the children a little bit diff a little bit darker kind of goes, uh, goes a long way for me with my own grandchildren. And I know plenty of folks who have their own, they themselves or their family or their friends. Uh, you need to have something a little bit darker. So let's start with the lady in the field image. And what I'm going to do is ink her up using my memento ink pad. So we're starting with just kind of the way it's intended or the way it's designed um, to be. And so, and these are just little three by four pieces of Whisper White cardstock that I'm using just for means of demonstration. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, and we've been looking at cinnamon cider. So this is kind of where I, I wanted to start today. Um, and when I'm doing um, multiple projects with blends, I will take the blends that I'm using and put them, or, you know, put a rubber band around them. And that way I know these are for a particular card. These are for another card. So um, that's just kind of a little tip that you can use to help you keep your blends straight when you're doing several projects. Kathy, I'm glad you're here. And Laura, welcome, welcome. So we've been looking at cinnamon cider and I, this color is actually a great addition to our skin tones. And I'll show you what I mean. So with my lady here, um, let me start actually by giving her some really, really dark hair. And I have my black blend, black blends in my little basket somewhere. Let's see if I can Did I leave them over on my workstation. No, nope, here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making her hair black and I'm going to give it a little bit of curl. So that instead of just kind of in the breeze, as it were, I'm going to give it some definition by doing little round strokes and that is going to give it a little bit of curl. Now that could be kinky curl like you see in uh, ethnic hair or it could just be curly hair. My granddaughter Olivia has curly hair. So that enables me, you see how that looks different than this. So just by going outside the lines, coloring outside the lines, you can get a different look. So I'm starting there. Now, instead of giving her like fair, um, like Caucasian skin, I'm gonna start with my light cinnamon cider and I'm gonna do her arms and just show you what a beautiful, beautiful skin tone this is. So for people of color, isn't that just gorgeous? I think this is a, an excellent, excellent skin tone. Now, what I can do is sometimes, um, you know, there are so many different shades of skin tone. If this is a little bit too golden, um, I like to add a little bit of gray and you wouldn't think it, but gray granite is a warm gray. And by adding the dark gray granite, you see how it's still a shade of brown, but now I've deepened it and added a little bit more color to it. So you see what's happening with my lady. Now, if I want to come back in, oh, Jeanette, I'm glad you like the color. If I want to come back in and bring this even a little bit darker, I can go into the dark cinnamon cider. Now, again, I'm using both the cinnamon ciders and gray granite because this cools it down. These are both really warm um, browns. And so here I'm going to go with my dark cinnamon cider, and that brought it 
right into a really deep, rich mahogany. And I have friends with this skin tone. So I know that this is realistic, it's authentic, and it just helps me to take my people images and kind of make them a little bit more appropriate to maybe the people I'm sending them to or the image I'm wanting to convey. So that is my number one way to um, kind of give some ethnic or darker skin hair, skin tones and hair tones. Now I'm going to show you another one that you can do where we're going to do something similar with our two ladies. So let me grab this stamp here and let's see what we can do with the mother daughter and I'll call the mother daughter here just for sake of um, simplifying my demonstration. Like I said, this could be an auntie and a uh, niece. This could be um, a grandma and a granddaughter. I mean, modern grandmas, you know, a lot of times look pretty young, sometimes are pretty young, and, um, and dress and, and present themselves much more youthfully than maybe the generation before us. So let me put these ladies on, and let's see what we can do to make them look rather different than... Um, let me show you here. Okay, so let's see what we can do. And this time I'm going to use some different colors and I'm going to start with the bronzer and the ivory. Now the ivory is a really good um, kind of, um, oh Marlene's here and let's see, Wendy's here and Jeanette, you got the the cinnamon cider blends. Yeah, I'm glad. They're they're really outstanding skin tones. Okay, I was distracted for a minute. Okay, um, so this is just the, the ivory and the bronzer. And these are just, they're not really true colors as far as Stampin' Up! goes, but they really are useful. And let me show you, this ivory is actually quite, um, it's, it's not like a pale, pale skin tone. So this actually works quite well um, for a light, kind of a, maybe like a Hispanic skin tone. Um, so that one is just straight ivory. Now, and I can tell you, this is a darker ivory than if you purchase you know, foundation, it's usually much paler than this. But this is actually kind of a nice light tan. Now let's look at what happens with the bronzer. The bronzer is actually quite dark. And it's, again, I think a really good skin tone. But look at it compared, I'm gonna show you the side-by-side -side comparison to the cinnamon cider so you can kind of see the difference. And again, I think this just allows us to customize things and help us get um, get a look that is different. So here's the cinnamon cider and here's the bronze. So this is a much deeper, richer in my view. Well, it's just a, it's a different, it's, it is definitely more orangey and it's much deeper than the bronze. But I could take that bronze and then, you know, uh, bump it up a little bit. So let's just go to the gray granite and let's see what happens when we add it to the bronzer or the bronze. I want to call it bronzer because that's what you call it in makeup. Now look what I've done here. This is much, much deeper. And yeah, I have friends with that skin tone right there. Now, again, I can take the hair. And um, yeah, Jennifer, you're right. Um, I think that's a good point that the ivory looks a bit more olivey. That looks a little bit more like my grandkids, my older grandkids. And uh, Jen, you're here. I'm glad you're here. We're, um, we're looking at skin tones with uh, the blends. Now, one of the things that I can do here with the hair again, and just trying to alter it a little bit, I'm gonna start by coloring her hair bow because that's gonna kind of help me to not go into that area with my blend. So I'm going to take this time the dark cinnamon cider. 
make sure I got the right one now. I'm going to go with the dark cinnamon cider. And you know what? I probably better color her face so I don't I don't mistake her face for um, for her hair. So there. And I'm using these are pretty small images, so I am using the small tip. And again, I'm coloring just a little bit outside the line and doing a little bit of a squiggle to attempt to get a little bit of a curly look. Now let's see if I'm able to do it. It's a lot easier with the black. A lot easier with the black. And I've only actually ever done it with the black. So let me go back with my black. And let's just see if I can get, because I think I can bring that look in and still have the brown hair. Let's see if that'll blend out. We'll see. Will be dark brown here. Not bad. Not bad. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the mom. And this image is larger, so it's going to be easier to go outside the line. See how I'm just doing little circles? And that can be just, you know, little curls. And I, again, don't want to get into her face. Then I'm going to come in with this dark cinnamon cider and just pull in some of that black a little bit. So now, you know, made her look like she has a helmet. Okay, I think I'm going to give her black hair because that didn't really work. That did not really work. But look what happens if I give her black hair now. And I will say, because I have that cinnamon cider in there, it's actually going to give this black a real richness. So now I have the black hair, the much darker skin. Let me go back in here and get her face so that you can actually see her face peeking out from there a little bit. And I think I did a little bit of this gray granite to give her that nice shade. Okay, so look how different these look from my originals. So just based on doing different hair and skin tones, you can get really, really different looks. And that is what I'm trying to do. Can you hold the images? Yeah. To see the change in design. Okay, there we go. Let me back up a little bit. So you see, it's a subtle difference. But it does, and I'm not even coloring the, the dresses right now, just to kind of keep it focused on the hair and the skin. Let me just check my... Um, the skin tone on the original cards, that is a good question. I believe, um, I believe these, it's in my PDF, I believe this is light crumb cake actually works quite well, and also the light petal pink. If you're looking for a light Caucasian complexion, those are the two that I like the best. The petal pink has a little bit of an orange peachy tone to it, and the crumb cake is a little bit more of a, um, like a taupe, like a really pale taupe color. Um, hey, Betty, I'm glad you like the, uh, I'm glad you like that. And Jennifer, you're seeing, it is a big, it is a big difference, isn't it? It's, it's not, you know, you're not doing a lot to it, but you really can get a big difference. So, um, and this is where, this is just where I was playing around, but you can see here and, and what I did. So this, you can have something like this that you keep to show um, kind of the different shades that you're using and just kind of keep that as a reference point so that you don't have to go back and, you know, experiment every time. But you can see where both of these, I was doing um, some uh, 
I, both of these, I was doing the, the curly hair and both of them, I was doing, um, you know, quite a bit darker skin over here on this girl. And then on these, a little bit lighter, kind of a, kind of a medium color. Um, yes, you definitely can use colored pencils, Jennifer. That is a great option. I think you just get much deeper, richer um, tones with the blends. And again, I think that the cinnamon cider blends are just an incredible addition to our uh, skin and hair tones. Okay, now we're going to go a little different way of going outside the box with this same stamp set. And now we are going to extend, um, extend our image. Now, for this, I need to clear my space here. And I'm going to get some different colors going. And I am going to really, really clean this stamp. And I'll show you why. So what I mean by that is, where is my, hmm, I usually have a chamois over here. I don't see one. Um, that's okay. This is actually better for what I'm doing right now. If you don't have a stamp and scrub, this is what we had before we had the chamois. It's still an incredibly useful cleaning tool. Um, for me, the chamois is great for everyday cleaning, but once in a while, your stamps are going to need a deep clean, and that's where this little tool comes in. And you are going to want to use some stamp and mist. This is a really old holder. I think the newer one's much bigger, um, but it's the same mist. And this mist cleans and it also has a little bit of a um, uh, emollient kind of... Um, conditioner so that your red rubber stamps don't dry out. Um, and this was initially um, designed for red rubber stamps. We didn't even have photopolymer when this was designed, but it works great for both. And the thing, the reason I say this is a deep clean is our chamois is flat. It's a flat sponge. This has like super fine, it's almost like velvet, but a little bit stiff. So it really, really gets into all of those crevices where sometimes you can get a buildup of ink, even when you're diligently using your chamois. Now, I also want to just really, really make sure that I have no residual ink on that at all. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up just a part. I'm only going to ink up the top part of my girl and her mom or her auntie, whatever the case may be. So I'm only going to go from about the waist and I'll show you why, because we're going to uh, make these into long dresses. And I'll show you what I mean. And I'm hoping my stamp is clean enough to where I'm going to have a nice image. Yeah, you see how you don't want to have residuals of their legs coming in there. And I'll show you why. Because we are going to take this dark poppy parade and I am going to outline my lady's dress and then I'm going to just keep going and I'm going to alter her dress into something that's a little bit more of a formal. Now when you have um, a kind of flowy formal dress like this. It will typically have, um, you have kind of a flowy um, hem at the bottom. So I'm going to come back through here with my light poppy parade. There's not a huge, huge difference in these two shades, a little bit. And as I go down the dress, I'm going to kind of have a little bit of a pooling of fabric so that I don't have to have a harsh line in creating my formal gown. So look what I did to transform my image from, where did I put my original? Where did I put it? Okay, here we go. 
So from this image to this image, you see how I'm able to do, to create a totally, totally different look. And that enables me to really have um, just a lot of versatility with a single stamp set. So not only can I create different shades of hair and skin tones, I can even alter the, um, the outfit. So um, okay, I'm just checking comments here. So Jennifer, you said your friend collects black Santa clauses and, and you'd love to show her this. This is a great thing. This is a great thing to be able to show people how to create more ethnic looks with our um, with our people. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way that her red gown has come out. Now I'm going to come along with the girl and I'm going to give her a blue gown and let me make sure I've got the right colors here. Okay, so I'm going to start with, this is actually Night of Navy. And again, I'm going to start by outlining the bodice of her dress. And now instead of just having a short dress and her legs, look at this lovely little gown I'm giving her. So maybe they're going to, maybe she's going to a piano recital. Maybe she is, um, maybe they're going to see the Nutcracker at Christmas time. Um, you know, this could, maybe they're going to a graduation of some sort. And I hope I got the right color. Yeah, this is light night of navy. It is. So all I'm doing here is filling in her dress. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the bottom of this dress. And I'm going to just give it a soft hem and not a strong line. And there I have totally transformed my dresses. And I know that when I was growing up, I absolutely loved playing with uh, paper dolls. And so to me, this is like a version of paper dolls where you take and you make a totally different scene. Now, one thing I was going to do, and this is actually the light basic black, is I can do something like this and just give a little bit of a sense of them walking into a room or something. Um, if I wanted this to be indoor, I could just color this, you know, I could come behind there and make this into a rug or something. Um, and I could put my greeting up here, but I'm not going to actually finish this because this was really just a demo. Um, I'm going to finish by showing you a, um, a card where we're going to alter our little children who are collecting the seashells. So I already have this prepped and ready, except for the embellishments, which I think everything else is in here. Let's see. Yeah, everything else is in here. Whoopsie. Maybe not everything. <laughs> well, 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 the... Uh, this is what happens when I grab a card kit. Not everything's in it. Okay. Well, let's see where, what we can do here anyway. So let's do this. Let's start by, well, let's start by cleaning a couple of things. So we can chat for just a minute while I clean my stamps like a good stamper. Um, this is where I oftentimes am uh, negligent and end up with a pile of dirty stamps when I'm done. But this is, you know, I really recommend, I think, somebody can look it up for me. I think the stamp and Scrub is still, I think it's like $30. Um, it, you'll use it for years. I mean, like decades. It is just a tremendous, tremendous tool to keep um, your stamps in the best condition and really do a, a, a heavy clean. Okay, so let's get our... Um, yeah, I'm probably going to have to get off camera for a second and grab a couple of things. I thought I had planned this out better than I actually did. So what am I doing? On oh, I'm doing really good on time today. Okay, so here are my children. And this is just such a sweet image. Just evokes the innocence of childhood like few other things, I think. It's just... I mean, that is just, I think that would bring back memories for a lot of people. 
Most, most people have been at some point to the seaside or to a river or to a lake when they were young. So I'm going to start by doing a little bit of light crumb cake. Let me start with dark. Dark crumb cake and then light crumb cake because I'm going to make this into sand. Of course, this could be, you know, like a river, a river scene. And then I'm going to come back in here with, um, this is the light crumb cake. And one of the great things about using the blends is that they just do not leave harsh marks. They don't leave the, the coloring marks behind. So, and if you're doing this with, um, with colored pencils, if you use your, um, if you use your um, blender pen, you'll get a similar kind of a result. And this one is beginning to go on me. It's beginning to go dry, but I'll just go hit that again to make sure I got it all the way filled in. Okay, so now I am going to take the ivory and I'm going to actually, let's do, do we want to do the light soft suede? Let's see. Let's do the light soft suede for these children. And just to kind of show you the difference, this is a much, um, soft suede has a little bit of a greenish tint. And so it's not nearly as um, warm as the cinnamon cider. So let me go back in here with cinnamon cider. Where are you? Back in cinnamon cider for our other child. So these could be friends, this could be sisters. But we're going to give them different skin tones partly by way of demonstration. And I love, you know, you, kind of all of the browns and beiges that we have are useful, and even the grays, to help achieve um, realistic skin tones. Now, this is a little bit too bronzy for me, so I'm gonna warm that up a little bit with so that it's a shade darker, but still in keeping with being a little bit more on the realistic side. Um, Stamp and Scrub is only $18? Really, Jennifer? Wow. Oh, Terry Lynn saying the same thing. I don't know why I thought it was $30. Wow, $18 is a, is a steal because I tell you, I, like I said, I've had mine for many, many years. I need to do a little bit more this, um, I've got my kids, this one's kind of walking on air, and I need her to be grounded, so we give her some ground underneath her. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them blue pails. My original, I had green pails. This time we'll do green, blue. And I think I'm going to leave the inside white. And let's see if we can do some of that fun curly hair on these little girls. As they are good. Now see this little girl already has hair that looks a little bit curly. So this one's going to be a little bit easier because it's kind of already there. This little girl, she has a ponytail going. So let's see if we can kind of get a little bit of an appearance of curly hair curly girls and of course you can have curly hair of any color but we're going to give these little girls we're going to give these little girls black hair and like i said my grandchildren they have very very dark hair but it's a super deep brown and um if you wanted to bring in a little bit more of that dark brown tone, um, rather than a pure black, then you can come in with the bronzer and it really, really kind of gives that a much, now it's a much darker brown. You see the difference between these two? By adding the bronzer to the black, 
it's lightened it and given it more of a warmth as opposed to being just a pure jet black. Yeah, Kathy, you've had yours for years as well. Yeah, Stamp and Scrub is a is a long wearing um, tool. Now, um, let's see what we can do. I need to put some sky back there, and I didn't. Let me go grab another blend really quick because I'm going to keep their little outfits white. It kind of keeps it um, looking really. Um, I think kind of maintains that look of innocence for this. So let me grab a couple of things really quick. I promise to be quick. kind of grabbing what's available without having to dig through stuff. So let's see if this will be an oak, a decent piece of designer paper behind there. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, um, I'm going to put light seaside spray behind here. And this is going to give me a really nice sky. And uh, just a backdrop for my children on a sunny day, just experiencing one of the joys of childhood, hunting for baby, baby shells. Maybe they are um, hunting for stones. Maybe they're hunting for rocks. Um, maybe they're collecting you know, other things, just depending on where they are. This doesn't have to be a seaside scene because I've made this a neutral. I mean, that could just be dirt. It doesn't have to be necessarily um, the seaside. Now, I realize I need to go back to my girl here and put her face on because <laughs> I left her face blank. And that's going to help tie in her other, I think, let me remember. I think this is light cinnamon cider. Yep, there we go. Okay, so there's my two little girls. And look at how different they look from my original little girls here. So just showing you how you can really customize those. And um, let's see, there is my base here. And this is that old world paper, but don't you think it looks a little bit like the sea. It looks a little bit like the sea. Now, one of the things I don't have over here is the designer paper behind it. So let me try this and see what we think. Um, this is about the same size and width. Let me grab my paper trimmer and see if we can trim this down and maybe, oh, I got a lot of blends here. I got a lot of putting away. <laughs> That's the fun, is having all those pretty colors to work with. So let's just bring this to four and see if this will blend with what I've got. Oh, you like the colorful mat. These mats are available um, in the online store. Okay, that's gonna be too wide if I decide to use it. And I'm not totally sure I will. It might be too much color. These are in um, our online store. They're not in the catalog, Diane, but they are in our online store. So they are all the in colors and uh, they should be the full size of a piece of grid paper. But uh, yeah, silly me, I accidentally whacked some in half. So let's see if we want to add that in or not. I'm not sure we need it. I would love some votes on whether or not I should add this or just leave it on a white background. Let's go ahead and stamp the um, greeting. I love this greeting. You know, that's the other thing. In this particular set, 
thinking of you is something we can always use. Collect beautiful moments. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful sentiment. And also this one, you're somebody's blessing. So I think all three of the greetings in this stamp set are absolute, you know, just knock it out of the park. Okay, so Kathy, you're asking what colors I use for light hair, like blonde. Actually, the light and the dark, so saffron, work excellent. So let me show you. Where did I put my samples? I was whipping those out earlier, and then... Okay, so like this little girl here, this is so saffron. And then I also have another... Another one with two little girls. Oh, here we go. These two little girls, I actually used Daffodil Delight. So you can see the difference. This is a much brighter blonde. And um, on the little girl here, this is a more golden blonde. The other thing you can do when you're doing the blonde hair is if it's too yellow, you can add a little bit of crumb cake and it'll make it a little bit more of a dirty blonde, which a lot of us have that more dirty blonde color. So that is uh, a great question. I'm glad you asked. And don't need the designer paper. Yay. That's what I was thinking. But what I am going to do is I think I'm going to put a little bit of this ribbon underneath. So let's do a little bit of ribbon. And then I actually... Thankfully, I'm finally going to do a couple of drawings. I have um, a stamp set from people who shared my videos on here in July to give away. And I also have um, some cards to give away for today. So based on comments here today, I will draw from comments. And I've got two cards to give away from last week to mail them out. Let me see if I got that straight. Yeah. So I have these two cards that we made on Thursday. This was our simple card that we did Thursday. And this was our stepped up. And I'm going to pop those in the mail based on comments. So I will do that as soon as I'm done here today. And then I also have a stamp set that I'm going to draw for. And I will put those announcements. So stick around when we're done for a few minutes or kind of pop back on. And um, you will see the winners of those. Okay, so here is that kind of white watery background with a little bit of the um, Seaside Spray. Isn't that pretty? What a pretty card. I like it. Again, just the just the the epitome of childhood innocence, right there. And so, yeah, you could do this to kind of match your you and your sister, you and your cousin, whoever. Maybe you and your friend when you were growing up. This would be just a fun card to do with that. Thank you so much for sharing, and that really helps me, and I work to reward you when you do that. Okay, let's do a little bit, just a little bit of a knot over here. More often than not, I like to put a little bit of a tie there. And then, let's do the greeting. And then that's all this card is going to need. I mean, it really doesn't need to be any more than that. Let me grab this. Collect beautiful moments. Let's see what I need. Here we go. I think it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. And I think I need to put it over here. Here's my black ink pad. Yeah, that little touch of ribbon, I think, especially because this is this is just stamping in paper, but when we add that little bit of ribbon, it adds a nice touch. One of the things that I love most about ribbon when we're when we're making a card is that 
you know, paper is essentially a hard um, product because it's made from wood. And um, it's not very good. Um, when you add a little bit of fabric, which is what, um, what happens when we add our ribbon, it really just brings such a nice touch. And I don't have my trusty, um, my favorite way of flagging over here, so I'm just going to do that. And then I'm just going to do like that. And that's going to be it. Super simple. But I think also when you're doing a card where you have really pretty artwork like this, you don't want a lot of fussy details added because you really want the, um, the artwork to stand, uh, to be the star of the card. And as much as we all love embellishments and beautiful things, I think that um, when it comes to stamp sets like this, um, and images, artwork like this, less is more. So that is um, what I have for you today. You wouldn't even put the greeting on the outside. It, you're right, you could just do it. Um, you know, Diane, I'm not doing sip and stamp because uh, <laughs> you can't go into the, um, the garden tea lounge has not been open. And I actually have not done any live classes since March, I did my very first live class here in San Antonio last Saturday, and um, and I can tell you I had it set up for lots of people to be able to come, and I didn't have a lot of takers. So what I'm finding is that a lot of people are just not ready to come out and mix and mingle with a lot of people. Well, my battery is beginning to go down, so I sure thank you for coming out today, and I hope that you're inspired to do some customized stamping with um, your people images in your stamps and that you will especially consider the beautiful moments. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous stamp set. And I did send out an email today with lots of information and news. So if you're not on my email uh, news, make sure that you join that. So that is it for today. I will be here Thursday at two o'clock for simple and stepped up stamping. Thank you again. Take care and God bless.